welcome to episode 39 of Around the Board, recorded on April 7th, 2024. Cinematic Flavor. This is a show where four board game enthusiasts discuss board games and board game topics. Today's show starts with everybody's favorite, Play Shelf Trade! After that, we try a new segment called Hansa Host. We'll then move on to another great game debate, this time about Dune Imperium. Then we'll round out the show with some what ifs with Tabletop Team Up. Now, let's meet our host, the leader of the Meeples, Daniel Connors, the illest and the chillest, John Theisman, board game sage, Chris Thompson, and why are you here, Hansa Teutonica? So weird. Now join us around the board. Hey, hey welcome guys. everybody and Hansa. Oh, hey guys, I'm so excited to finally be on the show. I mean, I've been on at some amazing comments that our guests have uh, left behind, but finally to be one of the four, I'm so privileged. Um, but I, I, I noticed that Andy's not here. Why, why, why is not Andy here? Well, uh, Hansa, to be honest, we consider you the Yoko Ono to, to Andy's John Lennon. So it's, it's, it might be forcing a breakup. I don't know. We'll see what happens here. It's a rare oh, privilege. Oh. <laughs> oh, that that makes me a little sad. <laughs> I mean, if people don't see me and Andy in the same place, they're going to start thinking we're the same person. <laughs> it's a great point. It's a great point. Did you guys see any good April <laughs> Fool's jokes out there? None better than ours. Why? Did you see something? <laughs> well, there was a few of them. I had a whole thread that asked people about their favorite uh, April days joke so i got a few of them one was from lucky duck games our friends lucky duck they did destiny's buffy the vampire slayer oh. which I, I was i was actually a little confused on that one because i was like i don't like that's not funny I, it could be real like i was yeah. like this could actually happen so i was like is this real or is this april fools like i kind of knew it was april fools but then uh then our friend uh, who works at the company, he kept kind of saying, well, maybe this was market research. Well, maybe this was market research. Oh, so, okay. So I don't know. So maybe for your you Buffy fans, maybe this will actually turn out to be something. Yeah, before um, they drop the money on the IP, let's see how this right. goes over in an April Fool's joke. See if everybody's like, hey, why don't you really make that? Yeah, it's not a bad idea. Yeah. Not a bad idea. I did market it's research true. before with Kickstarter. Now they're doing it with jokes. Yes. Which <laughs> I honestly feel Kickstarter is a joke. So I guess it's just on par. So, just, yeah, just a different punchline. That's all. Correct. <laughs> nice. Uh, uh, I didn't have up. any. I didn't have any April Fool's oh. things, but I did have a funny story about uh, the very first show that we talked about on Great Game Debate. Who can tell me what that was? What? Oh, I have no idea. Talked about Andy Griffith. Andy Great Game. I don't know. QE. Like, remember QE was the first oh, one. Okay. Oh um, yeah. Okay. Yes. I, I don't know. And I was like, sure. "What are you talking about?" I got you now. I got you. Now. <laughs> so, I, got you now. I was. Uh, teaching this to a bunch of people in my family. We had a five player game that set up and I hadn't played it in a while. And so it was a kind of a bad teach on my side. And I was also trying to do the expansion at the same time. So, you know, it was kind of a hurried, you know, throw the, I'm, in my mind, I'm thinking this is an easy game, you know, we'll get it. And uh, if you're not familiar with QE, it stands for quantitative easy. And it's like what, what countries do, they print money, you know, to, to, to buy whatever they want to. And everybody's trying to bid for these different uh, companies. And so the very first one that comes out, uh, my niece, they didn't want me to start it. Everybody's always afraid I'm going to cheat or somehow try to do something to win. Even though if I would start, it'd be the most fair thing because, you know, I know yeah. how the how the game works. But she started and she's like, okay, so what do I do for an opening bid? I'm like, it's up to you. It can be anything you want. And everybody's like, well, what do we base our bids on? Well, you base it on whatever she does. Okay, she did a pretty high bid of 12,000, which if right. you've ever played QE and if you've never played it before, wouldn't you say 12,000 is a pretty high bid for somebody that usually it's like eight? You know, or something like that. Yeah. So she puts twelve thousand. Not if you play with Daniel. Yeah. Not if you play with Daniel. Hey, when you know how to play the game, you got to start off high. So then we all we all turn turn in our bids, and she looks at one, and she's like, "Okay, well, the game is over." I'm like, "Why?" My nephew, who is like a huge uh, financial wizard. I mean, as as we brought out the commodities, he's saying what they're all going for right now, and all this, and and uh, he bid one point two billion on the very first, (laughs) very first company. Awesome. Wow. So we okay. Well, we started all I said, do you under did you not catch the part where if you spend the most money you lose? You can't you can't win if you do that. So I just thought I've never had that happen in a teach of QE where somebody starts way too high. It's always people start low. So that was that was pretty wild. But I I heard as a follow-up on the on the way to church today, he the, the, the car was really quiet. My niece told me he said just out of nowhere, 
I still think 1.2 billion is a fair price for a company. <laughs> so... <laughs> well, like you know, it. that's the point of QE. You, if one person bids that much, then your niece now knows that she can go pretty darn high and she's going to win them one after another after another. Yep. And all of a sudden it's going to be an arms race between them two. And then someone's going to be like, I just did $1 billion. What in the world did he bid? I guess I'm going <laughs> to bid $20 billion. And then yes. all, that's where it gets off. You yeah. should have just let it go. And see I should have, happened. but she would already kind of stop the game. So it was like, okay, let's, let's make yeah. sure everybody understands before we go on. But anyway, I thought that was funny. That was fine. That was great. All right. Well, that's enough for that. Uh, let's talk about what we have coming up here down the road. And that is uh, FBC GameCon. It's actually, this is going to be tomorrow after this releases. It's April it's 12th and 13th. Uh, so if you're watching this on the day it releases or the next day, come down to Gardner, Kansas and enjoy us. Uh, joy, join us for a day of board gaming greatness. Yes, Daniel. Thank you. Uh, FBC GameCon um, is a... Andy wants us to make sure we say this a free, free game convention because that is so rare these days. This is uh, we're going to give away hundred, literally hundreds of board games will be given away between raffles, between tournament prizes, most of which is just completely free to play and free to enter. You can you can buy more raffle tickets. You can buy T-shirts to get you more raffle tickets, but you'll get raffle tickets just for showing up. And so it's. <laughs> It's, it, there's really no reason not to come. If you're into board games somewhere in the Kansas City metro area within the next couple of days, you need to swing by. Look us up on Facebook, uh, FPC Gamers, and and check out uh, FPC GameCon. You can register online. And, well, now it's going to be a little late to register online. You can just come out and register. It's fine. You can register there, too. It's just online. You get to reserve spots in advance. But don't worry about it. Just come on by. We'll get you worked in the, worked in the system somehow. Right, Daniel? That's right. And make sure that you check out the uh, highlight of the show. And that is going to be on Saturday, the unmatched draft tournament. That's right. It is the highlight every year that we started it last year. It, and it's a highlight for me, maybe not for anybody else, but I love unmatched and make sure you get into the, the game. We're going to give out two copies of unmatched the new, uh, I forget which two sets, but two of the sets. So uh, cool. it doesn't matter which two they're free if you win. And if you just show up, so Come and join us, and we'll be happy to see you. Daniel, I guys, want to get you to oh, – oh, no, wait a minute. Before you move on, I want to get you uh, to make a commitment on the air, on the show right now, that you will not win your own tournament. I will make no promises. Though, <laughs> speaking of not winning your own tournament, I almost won March Madness of board games. Oh, man. I, I effectively came in second place, which I was pretty yeah. bonkers excited because I've yeah. always been at the bottom. But it was between Castles of Burgundy and Dune Imperium. And I was in second, and Carissa, uh, sorry, I don't know your last name, so I'm not going to say it. Carissa uh, predicted. Uh, uh, Castles of Burgundy yeah. and Castles of Burgundy ended up winning, making her the victor and me number seven. <laughs> oh, wow. But it was that big of a deal. Was, okay. Yeah. I was so close though. I was so close. And uh, you know what? I think the people were right though. I thought that people loved Dune Imperium, but as we'll find out in just a little bit, mm. uh, maybe Castles of Burgundy was the better game. Okay. Or maybe it wasn't. I don't know. Maybe we'll find <laughs> out. All right, guys. Well, uh, it's enough of our banter. Now let's get to the show. Time to play the game. All right. Mm -hmm. Around the board is all about debating to to different topics with tabletop gaming in four unique segments, each hosted by one of us. A behind-the-scenes judge will award points, and at the end of the show, the, con the contestant with the most points will be given 120 seconds to dazzle and to entrance you, the spectator, with whatever whimsical fancies they like. Now, it's time to play the game. Round one, fight! <laughs> start off with the best game the original game uh and we all know that the first and original are the best old games better than the new ones we all know this so today we're going to play some play shelf trade and for those of you that are new we'll let you know that play shelf trade is a segment where we take three games and each choose out of those gitch out of those games which one we'd like to play right now which one we want to shelf later and trade away for something something better but you can also manipulate it however you'd like today we have <laughs> got the godfather corleone's empire Godzilla, Tokyo Cat Clash, 
<laughs> Sorry, but many two ads on games. And Jaws. <laughs> so I will go ahead and start it here because it's this, you know, my segment. I started this. It was all my brainchild. No one helped at all. And <laughs> I'm going to go with, oh, man. Okay, so we're just going to, oh, man. I, I guess I'll just jump to it. I'm going to go ahead and put Godfather as my shelf. That game I really, really, really enjoyed um it's it's kind it has some feels of tammany hall but not exactly and i really like tammany hall um and so maybe it's just like the board and the fact that it's area control makes me feel that way but regardless uh i just i really enjoyed my my play of godfather uh it felt good thematically my mechanics were tight uh it played well it felt right right sometimes you have the game and the problem with the theme is that the play doesn't feel right Right. Even if it hits hits all the all the spots, it just doesn't feel right. Like viticulture feels right with the theme. So <laughs> that's what Godfather does, and I love it. I know everyone talks about how I talk about other games during this thing, but I'm trying to give people perspective on why I feel the way I do, people. <laughs> Anyways, so then I'm gonna go with I've not actually unfortunately got either Jaws nor uh Godzilla Tokyo Cat clash gosh two <laughs> stupid ads on phone games like uh, i can't it messes with my head all the time um and i'm gonna go with that uh, godzilla tokyo clash because i i've seen the game it looks really good and at first i was like okay it's miniatures and it's cheap and it's an ip it's probably trash but i've heard from a lot of people that i trust they're like you know it's actually pretty fun for what it is so uh, I definitely want to put that as my play and finally get it to play because I've honestly wanted to play it for a long time before we start talking about this. And because of it, I guess I'll go ahead and trade Jaws just because I have to, mostly because I haven't really heard anything about this game except from John. And John likes the game just because of theme, and that's not <laughs> great. So I'll go ahead and trade that one to be safe. Uh, but I, I think there's possibly some upside with it as well. All right, Hansa, so uh, what you get? Well, before we, before we throw it to Hansa and oh, waste okay. all of our time, uh, can I just say a few things about what about your observations there? First of all, if you're wondering why we're doing three games based on uh, on movies, it's because we're going to be talking about Dune Imperium and the Great Game Debate, mm -hmm. which people say that's about a movie. So, but <laughs> Viticulture, I I first I kind of cringed at what you said, but now I agree. You're right. Uh, Godfather embraces the theme of the exciting underworld of gritty crime in the same way that Vitical Viticulture embraces watching grapes grow it's just as exciting so there we go. I, I think you're right i thought i disagreed with you but i do agree with you chris good job well 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 done there also you baited me and i was like oh okay john's turn a leaf he's actually decided to like the game that has the most theme and good gameplay of all time that somehow which makes no one sense at all that you don't like and then i got baited in, and i was like oh no here come it is here it it's comes. too too me. close to the theme you We're watching me. grapes grow sorry <laughs> but all right, Hans, I can lay it on us. I was going to say that Godfather was going to be my trade, but since John said, or since Chris said that it was just like Viticulture, I guess that's going to be my shelf because I love Viticulture. And if Godfather and Viticulture are essentially the same game, then I must have that game. Now, Godzilla, he terrifies me. So that's going to be my trade. Uh, and then Jaws. He also terrifies me, so that's going to be my trade as well. I don't want to play either of these. I'm not a big fan of scary Ooh. monsters. Oh. Yeah. Well, it's not exactly how you play the game, Hansa, but you know you gave the good college try, so that's 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 fine. I give Hansa points on brevity. So. That's true. That's <laughs> right. That the is point. the. It's all I was yeah, hoping that's... for. <laughs> points for being to the point. <laughs> yes, that's right. Well, I'll, I'll take it from here, Hansa. Thank you. Um, so <laughs> let's get this back on track. Uh, <laughs> I think uh, Godfather has to be my shelf. And, I, and I, I, I apologize now. I have a feeling it could be John's shelf as well. So we might get uh, uh, consistency there. But it's just such a good game. It's probably one of the most underrated Eric Lang games as well. Uh, I, I don't know why this game gets the doesn't it gets overlooked. I think it's just because of the theme. I think people think Godfather, the movie, and they're like, oh, I don't want any part of it. But if they made it like general, just generic mobster, I think people would take a look at it a lot closer. Oh. And I, and if you've dismissed it because of its theme, I strongly encourage you guys to give it a try. It's worker placement, area control, and just, and it's aggressive. It's just, it just has so much that we want in a lot of games. Uh, Godzilla Tokyo Clash is going to be my play. Um, actually, Andy actually owns this game because he's a big Godzilla fan, and I got to play it with God uh, with Andy, and 
Godzilla? this is a skirmish game that Andy actually enjoyed, and me and him actually played it, and it was surprisingly good. You can pick up cars, you can chuck it at buildings. A uh, very, uh, very unique uh, system for what it is. Now the problem is there'll probably be no expansion, especially since the design studio got sold off uh, Prospero mm-hmm. Hall. So I don't know if we're going to see any more of it, which will be a big. Uh, hinder on there also why i wouldn't want it on my shelf because the replayability is going to lack eventually and then jaws i have no emotional attachment to jaws um i watched them as a kid but i didn't really care about it and it's a one verse mini and i already have too many one verse mini games and i would rather play almost any other one verse mini game than this jaws game i think it's one verse mini correct me if i'm wrong in the comments guys but there you go my jaws is my uh trade Godzilla is my play, and Godfather is my shelf. So, Daniel, John, it's, it's, are you going to prove me? Oh, no. sorry. What was that, Chris? Yeah, I was going to say. So, so you don't think it's actually the theme of Godfather that put people off, but the fact that it's an IP. Yes. Okay. Okay, that That's makes right. sense because I was like, people love mob- mobsters. Like, what are you talking about? Like, okay, now I got you. Now. Since they they see IP and just move on, that makes sense. I yeah. Know. Because while IP games are making a resurgence and people are can get behind them nowadays, you still only get the IP games that you enjoy. Like so, if you don't like Godfather, and I think John is one that doesn't really like the IP of Godfather. Like, all right, so why... yeah, let me say what I think about it. No, 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 I'm gonna speak for you, say John. It for me. So just sit, sit back and uh... <laughs> we got this. No. Don't you worry. Uh, <laughs> anyway, yeah, I think it's def- definitely the IP. Yes, just to to expand on what Daniel said there. Yes. The Godfather, I'm sorry, but we're going to get into the Godfather movie now because (laughs) back in the day, then when DVDs were a big deal, okay, and I got my first DVD player. This is I'm old school. Chris says he's old school, but no, there's no old school like my old school. Uh, I joined a DVD. I'm old in the mind. I joined a DVD (laughs) club. The things they tell you never to do, right? You know, but you get you know 80 DVDs for a penny. Yes. And so I got, I said, <laughs> yes, give me. I did not know you got suckered in my Columbia. Yeah, That's all. yeah. So give me Godfathers <laughs> one, two, and three, man. These are supposed to be the best. I love, I love me some, you know, some mobster movies. And uh, I don't, I just don't get the appeal of the Godfather. And people say, oh, every guy can quote Godfather because it, no, it's, it's a slow, boring seventies movie. It was, it's every trope that's in any seventies movie and it's it, only to the max, you know, where they, there's no editing. There's no, it's, it's, oh, here's the guy driving down the street and then he's going to park here and then he's going to get out and he's going to walk a hundred yards up to this door. And we're going to want, we're going to film every bit of it because it's going to be an eight hour long movie for no reason. And what I don't get is it's a fictional movie. You can make it up. Something can happen. Okay. You're not bound by history. And yet we have movies based on mobsters that are based in history that are way more exciting. Okay, that's the end of my rant. But that's why people stay away from the Godfather game. I've got to tell you, it's got to be. Because, I mean, it appealed to people that are now 80 years old. So they're not out there buying games. That being said, it's a spot on my shelf right there behind me. Because the game is, as Chris, as Chris would say, is French Kiss. The game is just amazing. It's if it's it's got to be in my top five at least of games all time i've never had a bad time playing it you can know you're gonna lose and have a blast playing godfather that's what's so good about it and so and yes i so wish they had just done no ip it was just called mobsters incorporated or something the only thing godfather about it is you've got marlon brando images throughout the game that's it there's there's no other connection to the movie so it can be a generic theme and so that's that's my only that's my only gripe about it but yes awesome game that's on my shelf i'll quickly get through these others yes jaws is one versus many daniel one shark many people getting eaten so <laughs> that's that's what that one is like the other two i've actually had and traded so i've got to decide one of these to play and it's going to be jaws jaws is the one i'm going to play because i think i might not have kept it long enough to give it its due i thought this game group that i played with was going to really like it i had a blast with it at gen con i got it and then i i could never get people to to catch on to it it's one of those where uh if you're the shark, you can play like secret moves and all this. And, and so I, I just quit doing secret moves because people were having a hard time with it and they still couldn't figure out where I was. I'm like, you know, I just ate people here and I can only move up to two. I played no secret moves. Why are you searching on the other side of the board? It's like, what are you doing? Uh, but anyway, so I guess by default, even though I kind of like them both the same Godzilla, Godzilla Tokyo clash has got to go just because on match is so much better. It's nothing bad about Tokyo clash. It's a great game. It really is, but there's, there's no more to it other than the monsters that come with it. Highly detailed colored monsters, which are amazing. 
So these are all good games, I would say. But yeah, by default, uh, Godzilla is going to go away. I wish it got the villainous treatment where it kept getting more guys coming out, but it's not going to. So sorry I went long there, but you know, hey, it was a long movie. It took a long, it took a long gripe. So all right, so we're a board game podcast and stuff like that. But we're talking about this, so I I have to defend this movie now. Now again, <laughs> I'm defending it, and I think you're going to be surprised on it. Okay, so. I did not see this movie or any of the three until about a year ago. I had literally never seen them. I'd always heard they were incredible and blah, blah, blah. Right. And I watched it and I walked away from the first one thinking, I get it. I get why people think this is the greatest movie of all time in the same way they think uh, gone with the winds, the greatest movie of all time, the wizard of Oz, um, you know, all, all those classics, the ones that people are like, these are just top tens, they're greatest ever. You need to watch them if you're a movie buff or anything like that. Because at the time, they were groundbreaking. If you watch other movies from the same time when the original Godfather was made, they are awful. The audio is terrible. The cinematography is awful. Like, this thing was a beacon of light in a dark world of cinema at the time. So, and then when you have that, you think about that forever. And you're like, oh, that's why it's so great. But it, based on current standards, yeah, it's a real bore. And mm-hmm. two and three just get worse and worse. They just yeah. stupid, actually. But but I understand why it's held in such regard, even though it's not that very good anymore. So, Chris, the, right. that argument is the argument of why we should still play Monopoly today. Because in the <laughs> yes. 20s, it <laughs> was groundbreaking, <laughs> revolutionary. No one has seen anything like it. So you should still play it today. You're the one that wanted to do a show about it. That was your idea, not mine. <laughs> I know. I thought it was a terrible my idea to do is, a show about Monopoly. I, my point is time ages things, and you right. got to be able to look at it and go, you know what, this doesn't hold up. And I haven't Correct. watched it myself, so I'm going to take John's word for it. That it doesn't yeah, hold you up because you know time makes fools of us all. To yes. quote that's what I'm saying. It's, it Fry. actually doesn't hold up. It's just fine. It's not even all that good. But at, comparatively to at the time, it was groundbreaking. So, but <laughs> even with board games, that I agree. Like people like don't like Catan anymore. And yes, it has its flaws. But I also think it's just that little a little a little change away from being still great uh, for those that have been played for a long time. But then you got people who da- like Daniel who think just because it's old, it's not good anymore. He has those dark color glasses not rose color glasses dark color glasses <laughs> for old games and he's got rose color glasses for current games but i know the people who are watching the show are not idiots <laughs> like daniel and they have good opinions and good thoughts so when you have those please put those in the comments below and disregard the responses of the idiot daniel who makes to your comments just disregard him look at the ones <laughs> i give you i'm gonna shoot you straight <laughs> but also like share and subscribe round two fight All right, guys, so if you haven't picked up on it yet, this is our cinematic episode. So we thought um, it would be a little bit fun and different to throw some movies into this. So we're actually going to rate some of our top movies. Oh, wait a second. Rate movies? Uh, but I, I thought I was going to host. Uh, this It was my idea. Okay, you're right, Hansa. I'm sorry. Uh, you, normally our guests don't host, but... Go ahead. Do do you have an idea? Oh yes, I do. And it's totally original segment. It's we take three movies and choose out of these three movies which one I would want to play on my VCR right now, which one I want to shelf to watch later, and trade to Blockbuster for store credits. Totally original. Yep, <laughs> Hansa, I'm pretty sure that's just play shelf trade. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? It's fine, Hansa. You just go for it. What three things do you have for us? Okay, well, today I want to take three movies that are based on board games. These three movies are going to be Dungeons and Dragons, Honored Among Thieves, Clue, the original, and Battleship. All right, so first I am going to say I want to watch clue i actually have it primed in my vcr right now ready to watch it when the show is over i love it i love these old old shows that are all grainy and fuzzy and stuff it just makes me feel so happy uh and then for D D, i'm gonna be a trade it has monsters scary scary very colorful monsters i don't like that and battleship uh it's just about 
you know, ships fighting each other. So I'm going to say that that's a play. So why, I mean, why wouldn't I? Or not a play, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to shelf that. Yes. Hey, Hansa, did you know that Battleship actually has aliens in it? Uh, what? It has aliens in it? <laughs> I'm going to trade it. Trade it. Get it out of here. <laughs> All right, Hansa, I, you really got to play this game. It's play shelf trade, not play trade trade. 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 Yeah. <sighs> you oh, know well. what? Maybe maybe next time you're on, you'll you'll fine tune this and you'll figure it out. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, for me, I'm going to start with Clue. Clue is a trade, actually. I'm going to trade what? this for store credit. Um, Clue's obviously the oldest movie out of these three, and I still haven't watched it. And just like our previous conversation about Godfather, old movies don't age very well. They say it's funny. They say it's cool. But you know what? It's already been 40 years, and I haven't watched this thing. I don't want to watch it now. So I'm going to trade it. Now, for my shelf, or to put I well, how, okay, yeah. So the shelf, <laughs> I'm going to say D&D, Honor Among Thief. Such a good movie. So clever, so good. I was just blown away by how well they did in this movie. Uh, there was not a lot of uh, high hopes for this movie. Based on their past iterations of D&D movies, we didn't think this was going to be anything. And I saw some of the previews and I was like, Man, it's about thieves again, and they're just going to run the gauntlet and try to steal things, and that's all this movie is going to be about, just like the last one. But you know what? It surprised me. It had a really good Easter eggs in there, and it really laid in to what makes people enjoy D&D, and it really felt like I was at, a, at the D&D table playing a session, and that movie just made me feel that way. And then battleship i'm gonna say watch you know it's one of those things where it's so bizarre that they felt that they needed to make a battleship movie that i really kind of just want to watch this movie like I i'm intrigued kind of like a car accident like i have to know what this movie is about now granted i haven't been tempted to watch it yet but the more i look at it the more i'm like man this could be cool. I mean, it's just an action flick that is going to blow things up. It can't be any worse than like Fast and the Furious or anything like that. So, so yeah, <laughs> those are mine. Um, you know what, Daniel? This is you put me in a conundrum because yeah, I think I completely agree with you, but on a whole totally different reasons. And <laughs> that's what makes me want. A lot of times when we do this play shelf trade, people are, I don't know this. I'll hear Daniel and he'll be so overfired. Def defending a position I was going to take that he turns me off on it and I'm going to switch my position because I'm like, no, <laughs> if you agree that much that way, I'm going the other way. Cause I don't, I don't, now you talked me out of it. So, but in this case, I think we're, I think we're close. Uh, but for different reasons, like I say, once again, the battleship is my watch. Like I said, I could grab my kids, come in here. Let's watch us some battleship. This looks like a fun movie. St I mean, stupid movie, like exactly like fast, and the furious. No basis in reality. Just, you know, fun things blowing up, whatever. Ships going crazy, whatever. There's aliens too, I hear. So there we go. Much to the chagrin of Hansa. So that's <laughs> going to be my watch. Uh, putting on the shelf is going to be D&D &D Honor Among Thieves, which, and also for different, completely different reasons than Daniel. Because when I saw this trailer in the theater, I was, this movie looks amazing. This looks fun. It looks entertaining. It looks like it's got good effects. It's like whatever. And oh, it's DD, whatever. Who cares? It's I didn't get any DD vibe out of it. It was just this looks like a fun movie. So completely different than what Daniel was saying. It's like I I was like, this looks this looks like really fun. So I think that's probably gonna be my shelf. It's probably got the best uh what would you say, best production value of any of these. So you know, it's one you'd have yeah. on your shelf and watch over and over again. So that's that's what that is. Clue, shame on you if you haven't seen Clue yet. Number one. <laughs> uh number two, Absolutely. the only reason Clue is my trade into blockbuster movie is as I had mentioned before. It's a good movie, and I don't know if you know this or not, Daniel, but there's like five different alternate endings to it. So everybody yeah. that went to see it in the movies could come away. There's how many, Chris? Three. 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 That's like five. That's within the ballpark. Uh, well, but so then it's kind of cool when it was in the movies, then people come away. No, 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 no. That's not who did it. Yeah, it was. I watched it. No, no, no. You know, so it's kind of cool. People could argue about it. That's the cool thing about it. But other than that, everything about it was done better even earlier, like in the 70s by a movie called Murder by Death which is an amazing movie with an all-star cast and it's better than clue clues enjoyable murder by death is on another level and so if i was going to watch one it's going to be murder by death so bye bye clue i'm afraid you're going to have to go but not because i haven't seen it like daniel so <laughs> that's what i got 
I suppose yours is a little more acceptable because it's a you're forced to, not because you're uninformed like Daniel. But it is what <laughs> exactly. it is. And, and, and I still need to see that Murder by Death. I know we talked about this recently, maybe even on the last episode, in fact. Uh, I do need to watch that. But uh, yeah, so I think if you've watched the show before, you know what my tra- my shelf is, so I'm going to leave that one for the last. I'm going to go with... I'm going to go watch Battleship. And, and the reason yeah. is because... Clearly, I, I okay. I think I'm pretty sure I've watched it. Okay, <laughs> but I don't remember anything about aliens. So if I have watched it, it's just that forgettable. But if I haven't, then you know what? I want to watch that for all the reasons I don't want to watch and tra- therefore trade D and D, because at least something interesting might happen if I'm watching the Battleship movie. At least aliens will show up and something interesting will happen. I watched the D&D ba- um, battle or whatever among thieves. The, the, the I can't think of the word. That place, that movie. And I was like, you know what, Daniel, you're right. I felt like I was playing a game of 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons where nothing <laughs> interesting at all happens. It was unbelievably boring. It was unbelievable. Like, yep, they're going to do this, and they're going to do this, and they're going to do this. It was as tropish as you could get and as boring as you could get. Nothing interesting happened. So uh, (laughs) it was not worth my time, and nor is playing 5e. But that's a whole other story. So therefore, the final, the final, the the bride, the, the light in the dark, again, clue. Like, I, I I love this movie, and and yes, I love what kind of thing that what John talked about. They had the foresight and the intro in like the idea, like back then, to be like, you know what, in this theater, let's have this ending, in this theater, let's have that ending, and that's like super cool. I think that's super smart and like created a buzz back before there was the internet. Imagine them mm-hmm. doing that now before yeah. you know, with the internet, people be like, wait, what? Why do I not? Right? But when you watch it now, if you have it on DVD or get it streaming, you actually get all three at the end, and it's so fun because. The movie progresses and then at the and then the movie ends and you're like huh okay well that's interesting that's not i didn't expect that to be the ending but okay and then it's like or it could have happened this way and then there's a whole like montage that tells you about the next thing and so it's just it's so well done uh i don't know what to tell you if you think it hasn't aged and that it's bad video quality or sound quality you might check your <laughs> eyes or ears i don't know what to tell you about that the lighting could uh, be better the lighting (laughs) all right uh but anyways yeah no it's it's it it is a a, 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 i think there's been other shelves there's been other shelves that i've done on this on this on the show that maybe is actually more of a shelf possibly i'm not sure i own a game or that we've at least done play shelf trade for enough that i is more important for me to have on the shelf the rest of my life than the movie clue like wow that's nice i love that movie it is (laughs) aces yeah. for the the one-liners like it just it's aces yeah you, you know in in the defense we're we have to pick play shelf trade for these three and clue right. just never has like made me want to turn it on so that's why it's my trade but I, but in fairness i would watch it and i do appreciate historical film so i do appreciate what it tried to do early on and that was ground breaking uh despite what i've said in the past i actually do uh appreciate when things like that happen and i can watch a movie in the context of when it came out but uh yeah i don't know it just it's just never really jumped out to me i mean i've had opportunities to watch it and i just haven't so i don't know well it sounds like all three of us need to get together and watch battleship then that is true yeah <laughs> well, the show, yeah, let's watch the battleship <laughs> yeah but hansa hansa won't join us unfortunately no i think it's too scary terrible. for him is he going to so. close out the segment uh I, are you hansa Oh, yes, I do want to close it out. If you liked what you heard, then please subscribe and give us a like, and we'll be right back after this commercial break. From the creators of Around the Board comes a brand new, unique show, unlike anything you've ever seen. Hey, guys, welcome to The Try, a brand new show where we'll debate board game topics and news with three of me. Wait a minute. Isn't this just a ripoff of Around the Board? No, not at all. This time there are three of us, and it's all the same person. Uh, <laughs> listen, I'd rather not be associated with Andy One or Three. Thank you very much. Hey, wh- what's wrong with me? Or me, bruh. Or me, bruh. Huh, that sounds like amoeba. Oh, for Pete's sake, can we just talk about, uh, 
board games. Yeah. And that does it for today's show. Remember to join us soon for The Try. All right, welcome back, guys. And before we move on to the second half of the show, we'll take a look at the scores. And uh, I'm at five points. Chris and John are tied at six. And Hansa, did, did are you even playing the game, Hansa? I don't think he is. I think that's the problem. I, he was really confused on play shelf trade. He thought it was just trade, trade, trade. Apparently, so. And then we played uh, we'll, it twice, we'll, so he really got screwed. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Well, one of was his idea, so I, I don't that know. That is fair. It was that. his fault. That's a good point. That's a good point. That's right. So let's hope he does better on round three uh, in our great game debate. Round three, fight! take a look at uh, board games of the past and see if they still hold up to today's standards. That's right. Dune Imperium. It's an old game, guys. It's been out for like five years. That's oh. ancient in this industry. That's that's just a times of, uh, you know, years gone by. But uh, anyways, let's take a quick how to play video. Dune Imperium is a deck building worker placement game. That means you're going to add cards throughout the game into your deck. And when you play your cards, you're also going to place workers onto the board. On your turn, you're going to play one card. The card's going to have different symbols that correspond to spots on the board. When you play this card, you can play your worker on any of those spots. Also, in the gray bar, you get that reward. In this case, you would receive a water. So if I played this card, I would get to put my guy on a purple spot, a triangle spot, or this faction with the water. When I place my worker on one of these spots, I will get the reward on that spot, collecting them. Once I've done that, the next person goes. When he gets back to me, I will get to play another card. That card will tell me where the worker can get placed and what reward I will receive. Then everyone will do this again. Once everybody is out of actions, that person will pass, and then they will reveal the remaining, the, what is left of their cards. When you reveal what is left of your cards, you only get what is at the bottom. So in this example, I would get three recruit and one fight. So my fight, I'm going to adjust on the board here. And my recruit, I can spend right away to put a new card into my deck or multiple cards. So if I had three recruit, these ones cost two. I can get both of these and add them into my deck for use later turns. Then once everybody has passed, we go into the combat phase. Any units you have in the center of the board are added as two strength. So in this scenario, red would have two cubes so they have four strength and blue has three cubes so they're going to get plus six strength then you compare who has the most strength everybody loses their warriors and whoever wins the combat gets the reward on the conflict card in this case it would be one up on the faction track but sometimes it will give you things like victory points place claiming locations or resources the game is played this way over 10 rounds when all the conflict cards are empty or until someone reaches 10 victory points. Once somebody has met these gold, the round will finish and then whoever has the most points will win the game. Some of these locations will give you resources, but these locations over here will also allow you to go up on the faction track, which is one way to gather victory points. You can also gain victory points by gaining these entry cards. The entry card has a victory point symbol on it. You can do whatever the card says to gain those victory points. You do this over 10 rounds or when somebody reaches 10 points and then the game is over and whoever has the most points is the winner of Dune Imperium. All right, and that was a quick overview of how to play Dune Imperium. Uh, and so let's get into it. Let's get hear our thoughts. So Dune Imperium is a double-edged sword with me. The first time I played it, I actually traded it right away. I didn't want anything to do with it. Um, there was a lot of issues I had with it. Um, primarily, the when you play your card, it has the colored symbol on there, and that is where you're allowed to put your worker at. And that was such an eliminating factor that destroyed the game for me. I played it at four players, and what was happening is I would draw my cards and be like, okay, I didn't draw any of the of the squares i can't do any square actions but i really needed that square actions but you know what hey next turn i'll i'll, I'll draw cards with the square action and i'll get to do it so i draw a new hand for the next round and i yes i got my square card oh what's that chris john and andy all took the square actions i needed 
So it doesn't matter that I drew the square card this turn. But you know what? Maybe the next turn, maybe next turn things will look better for me. Draw three, five cards, no drink, green cards. I'm sorry, when the game is so fragile that you don't have any way to like compensate um, to, to get to where you need because of drawing cards poorly, to me, that is just, uh, that's just dead on arrival game. And I got rid of it. Now, this new play I played of it, I didn't experience that. I played with three players, so maybe that was it. Maybe the game wasn't as tight, or maybe I learned my lesson. But regardless, that that souring of the game really stuck with me, and it was hard to shake. Also, the award cards for winning your battle, uh, not for your entry cards. I always have an issue with any game that has cards that you can retrieve just because you took an action that are wildly imbalanced. I mean, you have one card that says you get plus two money this round and you have another card that's like seven fight. And these cards, like they, they need to be more balanced in a game like this because you didn't earn those cards. You didn't do anything spectacular to get those cards. So they should not be um, that swingy. And the last thing I want to mention is the combat. While the combat is intriguing and it is punishing, which normally I like in a game, when you lose all your troops and you thought you hedged your bets and you had the max amount of fight potential and you still end up losing because someone just had a seven attack, like those are all bad feelings. This game has a bunch of bad feeling moments in it. And to me, a game that has those bad feeling moments in it cannot be considered a great game like give me good moments make me feel it can be intense it can be um you know hard nose where you guys are colliding against each other and really fighting but i want to feel good playing this game and unfortunately too many times i felt bad and so for me not a great game wow daniel this in the game huh uh yeah well here's here's the thing what, what i think is really cool about uh us going over doing doing imperium when we first got the idea of doing this show do you guys remember that one of the first things we brought up was hey doing imperium versus uh, lost ruins of arnak you know which one's better? so much because better that was the big debate at the time when these two games came out they were considered so similar that oh, yes. you can only like one and you have to if you like one you really probably don't like the other one and i love lost ruins of arnak and so I, i'm like chris I played, I, I really love Lost Runes of Arnak. I've never not enjoyed my play of it. And so I actually had acquired Dune off of the half off Barnes and Noble sale. And I Ooh. traded it while I was still in shrink because I figured that's how I can maximize the value. Because I'm like, I have no interest in the IP. I, I never watched the movies and never read the book. And so, you know, it's like, why do, why do I want this? I like Arnak, you know, it doesn't mean I'm going to like this game. And so recently I've gotten to play it a few times. And Dune is a flipping good game. I don't know what, I don't know. And I, to me, I, if they hadn't come out the same year, nobody would be comparing these games. They're so dissimilar from each other. I don't see the similarities at all. Dune, for one, as Chris will back me up, is a real deck builder. You're not just action selection and doing the action right away and maybe doing it again, which is fine. I like that in Arnak. I love how that works. This works differently. This is a true deck builder. You are putting things in your deck. So, Daniel, if you didn't have the things you needed in your deck, you can get cards to put in your deck to have in the game. That's how you get the symbols that you need. Happened to me too in one of my games. It's like, I just need one purple symbol and I've got this game won. No purple symbols came out. I was kind of host. I did what I could, but I didn't win the game. That's that, that poor planning on my part. I had it didn't needed more purple symbols. But for the most part, it's, it's all planning that you can do at some point during the game. But that just came down to that last turn where I actually needed it. Um, so the IP, to me, the IP is the only turn off in this game. That's the reason I kept from playing it so long and then once i played it i i really like it this this is an amazing game and the confrontation the area control is the part that i was like well i don't know if a game like this needs that and to be honest it's not a it's not a huge part of the game i mean there's you can i i played it both ways i played it where i'm completely i'm all in every round i'm trying to win every time and i played where eh I'm going to do other things to get points. I'm not going to focus on that. If that's if it happens where I get people down there, that's great. Uh, but then if something comes up really big that I really want that round to win, then I'll focus in on it, which maybe happened twice throughout the whole game. And you can play both ways. You don't have to go all in on area control and go in on a confrontation in your armies. You can do other things to get points. There's there's it's a, there's a smorgasbord of points out there to be had if you focus on a certain area. Uh, the cards, I will agree with you on somewhat though. If there is a flaw in the game. The cards, because the first first time I played it, I thought I had the game won. I triggered endgame. I was way above everybody else. I'm like, 
well, unless there's some end game scoring on those cards, I don't know about. Yeah. And then one of the players, oh yeah, there's some end game scoring on these points. <laughs> so I'm like, oh man, I didn't even know that existed. I didn't I never saw that in my cards. So I didn't know there was such a thing as hidden end game scoring in the cards. So that, yeah, that if there's a flaw in the game, I would say it's in those cards that they can be a little too swingy. They should be a little more generic, you know, kind of this helps you in a different way than this helps you, but they all help you equally, you know, kind of a thing. Uh, the only other thing about the cards is there's a spot you can go on where you can take a card from somebody like at random out of their hand. Give me a break. I mean, I know it's <laughs> to keep you from, from getting too many cards, but at least you should be able to choose what card you give that person. Not, well, I've been working towards this end game scoring all game and now you took it. That's awesome. You know, just because you went there and I didn't have a chance to yeah. use these other cards first. That's a problem as well. That might need yep. to be a house rule where they see? choose what card they give you because otherwise I could see that blowing somebody's game right out of the water. But that's so, two feel bad moments that you just mentioned. So you're making my argument. But John, <laughs> I have to I have to say the the connection between Lost Runes of Arnak and Dune Imperium, I don't know how you don't see it. I mean, the cards dictate where you can go. Like that is a novel idea that both of these games came out with simultaneously. And, uh, and and that's one of the cool things about it. But Arnak does it so much better because there's only there's a lot uh, there's a limited choices like there's less symbols and you can always pay two money to get to the symbol you need if you don't have it. So there is always a way out. But uh, yeah, these games are so similar. Uh, I guess Dune Imperium, like I would say they're like up to a halfway point, then they diverge. But there's tons of similarities between these two games, just like uh Endless Winter does the same thing. The cards dictate where you go. That's where these games are all similar. And Endless Winter came out several years after Arnak and Dune, and it's still compared. So, oh, I've never heard. I've never heard that compared. Maybe I'm just the only one that hasn't heard that. So two things. You're the only one. one. First okay. of all, John, were you competitive in the game that you didn't uh, didn't join in a military? Yes, I was. I was uh, okay. finished tied for second, and it was neck and neck. Well, one person, uh, Dan Abel. Shout out to Dan Abel, who's amazing at board games. <laughs> Uh, and it played it more than anyone else. I mean, he was running away with it from the get-go. We we caught up somewhat, the, everybody else, you know, the, the other two that were playing. So I, I didn't feel like I was out of the game. But uh, but yeah, I think if someone else was playing instead of him, <laughs> I may have won that <laughs> game or I'd have been right up in there. Right. And then, Daniel, I feel like your, your point about the fact that they're both, like, the same game, that's why people put them together, that's like saying, like, all worker placement games are, like, the same game because they use a core mechanic the same. But they are absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> and you making that shrug means you lost all credibility for all the people, the three fans that you actually had. Cause they're gonna be like, this guy's a clown. Uh, anyways. Uh, all right. So my opinions on this game. All right. So I, oh, man, I, I'm, I'm very, very, I'm kind of in between these two. I like it and I don't like it. I see its flaws. It has some upside. Uh, I mean, obviously for comedy value, I actually had like, a, I was waiting for Daniel to say very specific things like early on in the game. Like, oh yeah, this is already better than Arnak. I was just waiting for the moment. He actually never gave me a moment. Maybe he was smart enough. I'll give him credit for that. <laughs> the one time he he had some uh, some smartness there to not open up that door. Uh, but anyway, so I was ready to pounce on it. But then I was like, we a couple turns in and I was like, okay, I ain't going to be lying when I say this game is way better than Arnak. And, and I have some, a lot of problems with Arnak for reasons that I've sp spoken about before, but I really enjoyed it. And then we got closer to the end of the game and I started to be like, there's some flaws here that are prob very problematic. Uh, yes, there is the cards that can be some in-game scoring as well as uh, immediate plays and they are super swingy. They're, the, the, the cards are not balanced themselves. Uh, when I played it, I, John wasn't available, so it was just uh, Daniel, Randy, and I, and there is a, the in the combat section, there's a, there's a kind of phases of cards. There's a handful of cards, like, you know, eight or so for phase one, eight for phase two, eight for phase three, and you shuffle them and only pick five. Now, we'll get back to that, because that adds some additional problems, but we'll talk about that in a minute, right? So, but again, the the payout and the importance of those combats become, become increasingly more important as you go on later in the game. It's more of a payout, but it's also easier because of your engines build up to have more troops. So it makes sure that it makes it to where there's more on the line. And that works. And Randy's thought was like, why don't they use like the special the special cards in the same way, where the ones at the end are more powerful than the ones at the beginning, at least. Yeah. That way, at least there's some balance throughout the game in that regard. 
Um, and, and I think that would help. I still think the game should just be, the cards should just be evenly balanced overall, but regardless. So, so there are some big swingy cards there that are problematic. John talked about the spot you can go to where if you have four and someone goes there, you have to like randomly give one out. I, I think it's probably okay. Like again, if you could choose which one, then you're going to keep the one that helps you score points and not the one that's not any good. And since they're unbalanced there anyway, I think I think it's almost like they knew the cards were unbalanced, so they're like, well, this is the way to somewhat fix it is to randomly give them away. So yeah. Uh so uh, there's some stuff like that. I know Daniel had a problem with the uh not being able to go where you want to go. Um it, it, that was something that I never really even thought about. I was lucky and just I mean, maybe it was because of a three-player game, not a four-player game. I never really ran into that problem. Uh, I actually even had a special play card that allowed me to go somewhere where someone's already at. I never even got to, never played it because I never ran in that situation. So, hmm. um, but I was never even thinking about the symbols. At the end of the game, I was like, okay, now if I were to play this again, I'm actually going to be caring about those symbols a lot more than just the effect. Before we were just the first play, I just looked at the effect. I played this card, it does the thing, that's what I care about. So that's something I'd look at more. But again, there's still some problems here. There are still some just little tiny things. And I'm going to be honest, I really hope I win this game because this, uh, today, so I can have my two, my 120 seconds, because this game further proves something I've been wanting to talk about that we have technically talked about before, but I have more reason to talk about it yet again. So hopefully <laughs> I can oh. win and have my 120 wow, seconds. Wow, so Chris with a teaser. It. Right. Okay. Sounds like he's trying to uh, bribe the judge there. Like, yeah, I mean, like I am, I'm it, not going to lie. I'm hoping I can bribe the judge so I can talk about this <laughs> this thing specifically. So, we'll wow. See. I'm just glad it's not going to be about peanut butter. You know, you know what? <laughs> I may is. be bribing, but at least I'm honest about it, opposed to your shenanigans with weird scoring for all the games we play that just <laughs> automatically make you win it and you know it. So, hey, board game Karen is completely fair, and uh, I would uh, I had, had a comment, a, com a commenter agreed with me. So, there we go, I've been validated. So, there it is. hey, Hansa, speaking of board game Karen, let's go to Hansa and right. see what yeah. he thinks about this. Oh, well, uh, Dude Imperium is a fine game. Uh, I mean, it's a little too sci fi for me, it has a big sandworm in it, which is kind of gross. And disgusting uh but it has cubes i do like me some cubes do you know how many cubes this game has i think it has four poor players that's 16 cubes so that's not quite enough cubes <laughs> i think this game needs more cubes you think that the cards are unbalanced but it's actually cube placement that is the flaw of this game that's right there's not enough places to put your cubes at so if they increase the cube placement this game would be probably number one on Board Game Geek. But as it stands, um, not enough cubes. I mean, Thanks, I, can't, Hansa. I can't blame it's amazing. you. Like, I get that. Wow. Like, it, there's more cubes than you thought, Hansa, in the game. But the fact, like, it is true. There is only one place to put the cubes. So I, I get it. I get it. Yeah. I mean, you got the track. I guess there's cubes there. But I think you might have forgot about the, all the true. combat, the combat oh. cubes. Right. But sometimes they're not cubes. Sometimes they upgrade them to actually have little miniatures. Oh, oh really? Okay. I think cool. the new I didn't yeah, know that. I think the new one has that. So uh Daniel, one one last thing. I'm surprised you don't like this game because basically it's a Marvel game. Because what? I got I had cards with Drax on them. I had cards with MJ on them. <laughs> I mean true. it's <laughs> this was you are this is a, you're, you're, that's fair. That's so, true. I, mean, I was I was telling I that. Characters, yeah. Yep. I actually played as well, Drax and he was equally dumb. <laughs> <laughs> oh that's true the player powers i'm glad you said that because the player powers were out of whack too my uh, character yeah. let me draw a card chris what did your character do well, it, it didn't let you draw a card but it lets you know what the next card you were going to draw was while mine was that. i just get like an extra guy if i've a, a conditional extra guy if yeah. i've already done other stuff in the game which is like mid game at mid probably mid game kind of stuff it's one mine finally yeah. goes off that i get an extra guy in combat which I mean, towards the end, we were, I mean, Randy were combating in like the combat was like 27, 25. So getting oh one extra yeah. power in a 27, 25 ain't much opposed yeah. to yeah. knowing what your next card is like Daniel had. I was just looking at the top of my card the whole game. I was, was like, it was like two hands. I had a hand of cards in the top of my deck. And I was like, hmm. I was like, this is powerful. I'm loving it. <laughs> <laughs> all right well what do you guys think of dune imperium as we said in our intro uh castles and burgundy versus dune imperium was in our finals of uh march madness of board games and and castles of burgundy actually defeated dune imperium 
do you guys think that that should be the case? Do you think Dune is a better game than Dune Imperium uh, than Castles of Burgundy? Definitely. Or do you just like both of them? Or do you just really like Dune Imperium? Never played. Doesn't matter. Let us know in the comments below. Round four. Fight! All right, round four comes to me. Not the award winning, but the much maligned tabletop team up. When I say much maligned, I mean by the other people on this show, which is funny because tabletop team up was not my idea. But anyway, in this segment, we dream up a game. A what if scenario, combining two games or ideas that already exist and mashing them together to make one epic experience. Something like Canvast, where you take <laughs> canvas and vast. Sorry, I got to get as much mileage out of this as I can. You and should, it absolutely. And so, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> and you can be, it can be two games like that was, or it can be a game and an IP, or it can be a game and a different theme or what have you. And so... I'm going to go first because I'm hosting the segment and appropriately enough, I'm doing this with the, on the day that we're talking about doing Imperium, because one of the things I brought up with doing Imperium is the IP. The IP turns people off uh, people like me anyway. And you know, I'm, I consider myself man of the people when it comes to board games. And so how about, so how about we do something about that? So, uh, so you're intrigued obviously by the popular game doing Imperium, but you have no knowledge of the source material, right? After all, who has time to read? Right. I mean, come on. And those movies are guy. those movies are way too confusing. I mean, a half hour in, I didn't know what was going on. If only someone would take the solid mechanics of this game and combine them with an IP that the common person can relate to, you know, Joe Public. How about centering centering it around a popular animated series that has entertained generations of gamers? Introducing Scooby Dune Imperium. <laughs> contains all the great gameplay of the original but includes the cast of your favorite cartoon sleuths there's also some minor tweaks instead of featuring a desert planet our heroes will enjoy a dessert planet in addition the cards you use to build your deck will incorporate guest stars from the show including sunny and Cher, don Knotts, as you see here and the harlem globetrotters like all this spice would go great on some burgers scoob scooby dooby doon <laughs> There you go. Scooby Dune Imperium, baby. It's got to I like happen. it, but John, I got to be it's honest. Don Knotts right there. Don Knotts. Oh, I didn't even see Don Knotts. <laughs> Fantastic. Don Knotts. Did you I know like he was it. on the original Scooby Doo? There you go. I'm not surprised because I, I I never, I don't, I never watch a lot of Scooby. I watched some Fat Albert and I know the Globetrotters on Fat Albert, Fat Albert a couple times. So that was pretty good. There we go. I got to be honest, like, this is not the same level as Canvas because you missed, you missed the softball. What was the softball? You didn't put the double O over the U. Uh, yeah, I wanted to keep the logo. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. You gotta, you gotta, gotta fix that. But uh, <laughs> otherwise, fantastic work. Fantastic work otherwise. All right, Chris, what you got, buddy? All right. So, uh, yeah. Mine <laughs> is... So mine, I don't I don't have the crafting ability of, of John. I mean, I actually do, but I use mine for, like, role play stuff. And there make, we go. Make, make, make some excuses. Making castles and making walls, that kind of stuff. That's where I spend my time. But regardless. So mine is, I'm combining two of my favorite things. My favorite genre uh, of board games, along with at least top 10, probably top five, uh, for sure, a series, if not just standalone film, of 18xx with Back to the Future. Oh, All right. So okay, I love intrigued. the original Back to the Future is fantastic. I, again, I'm not sure I've talked about this game uh, on the show before. I know I've talked about this verbally to some people, but I'm not sure I've talked about the game before. So I love, 18, I love 18xx as we talked about, and I love Back to the Future. And so a while back, I was like thinking, okay, what what's a game that I could make? What's an IP I could put on 18xx? And my thought was the Back to the Future series. So it would be kind of like out of sequence, and it would also be killing a couple of sac sacred cows of 18xx, but there's so many exceptions to the rule of 18xx, which is the reason there's a whole genre of the game, that I figured it'd work. So here it is. So what do you use? You have a map, but it's a map of Hill Valley, okay? You start out the game in the third film, so to speak, where it's the Old West. And as a, as a key uh, cog of 18xx games, you go to different cities or off-the-board areas, which are more cities, and early in the game, if you go to them, they're worth like 30. But then at the end of the game, because the game progresses over time, you start with 
small little trains that only go to two places that cost $80. That's the correct amount. Real trains cost $80. I don't care what you think, Daniel. <laughs> That's right. And then <laughs> later in the game, uh, you can get a train that goes to like six places for like, you know, $700 or something like that. So my thought was you have Hill Valley and, oh, sorry. And so the, the not only do the trains progress, but also the value of the different cities, they only go up. So the 31 might turn to 50, might turn to 80 at the end of the game. Well, my thought was to have Hill Valley and what it is, is you can go to the different cities and they're different values based on the time of the movie. So the clock tower in the, as you start the game in the old West is worth the most, right? Cause they're putting up the clock tower, they're building it. It's a big deal. But then in like the original film in 19 or then 1955, it's still worth something. But then in 1985, it's not worth anything because it's not working. Right. And then in 2015, it's also not really worth for something. And then like Biff's casino only happens during the 2015 era. So so all the different places on the map uh, have different values based on the era that you're in. And at first you're laying tiles that look like train tracks and then you're laying tiles that look like road and then you're laying tiles that are just little dots because your your cars are flying. So um, it would it, it, it again, that was really convoluted, not really long. I understand that. But I want to give my thought across of uh, why I think you could make it happen. I'm not sure anyone would be happy with the game, but me, uh, 18xx purists would actually have a problem with it. They'd be like, what the crap's going on here? It'd be too complicated for people buying it just as an IP, but I don't know. I think it'd be fun. Chris, I think you should give it a go. Give up on your Catan pipe dream that you have ah, and start working on that. Because yeah. I'd play that. That that actually sounded really cool. I love that idea. Let's do 18xx Marvel after that. I mean, oh, listen, the sky know. is the limit. <laughs> I think my only my only problem with it is as if it's based on 18xx. I mean, it's going to last four four and a half hours, or is this uh, going to be? Are you going to wish you could actually go back in time in this game and like, <laughs> get your time back? You know what? <laughs> I I have I've learned quite a few things for for it for playing 18ms recently. That's a 18x at full full. I mean, it's hard to 18 say 18ms. Full, 18ms. That's the one that happens only once a month, right? Uh oh my. <laughs> I'm not sure where that was going, but regardless, uh, most 18xx games take four to six hours, but there's one called ATMMS for Mississippi, and you can play it in two and a half hours. It's uh, it's a close, like, it's not, it, it's, it gives you all the feels. I can't say it's a full-fledged 18xx game, but it gives you all the feels of 18xx in two to two and a half hours, so I really yeah. enjoy it. It's fantastic. <laughs> I love that. that one. I love right. how it's, I love how it's, it gives you all the feel of the complete game in right. the maximum amount of time I would ever want to sit down playing a game. So there's this right. short little game that it can... <laughs> there and we it's go. Just, it's the unfortunate truth. Like, there's some things that have mm. to be cut, but, like, it, it still gets you there. It's still, it's fantastic. I really That's like funny. It. But so I think with job, that Chris. knowledge, I could figure out how to do it in two to two and a half hours. That's what yeah. I was. <laughs> well, that was a good one, Chris. That was. That was very, actually you. very good. Are we ready for Hansa? Yeah. Is this going to gonna happen? Going. Gosh. Are we? I don't know. <laughs> All right, guys. I'm so excited for mine. So mine is going to combine two games that has a lot of cubes. It's Hansa Teutonica with Lords of Waterdeep. Hanta Teutonica, my game is wonderful, but there is one game that has so many more cubes, and that is Lords of Waterdeep. You have like 50 cubes per color, and I don't even know how you would integrate them, but you could have adventures on your routes and uh, uh, between Europe and trading on the Mediterranean and all that good stuff, and you could just put more cubes in there from the, they could be cleric cubes and wizard cubes and, and, and thief cubes and you know, so many cubes. I, you know what, Hansa, I like it, but I think we need to go to the next level. I need, we need to collab, and I think we need to come up with sidereal lords of Teutonica. We Hello. need to add the cubes from a sidereal confluence as well. Oh my gosh, that's. I was actually I actually I was going to go another way, uh, where you could call it Hansa Deep, and uh, it could come with a little Hansa, and you put his little feet in little cubes, and you drop him in the deep. And that's how you win the game. <laughs> that's the way. I, that's the way oh, that, that felt a little aggressive there, John. Uh, <laughs> all right. I well, thank you, Hansa. That's a fantastic idea, Hansa. I'm looking forward to playing it. That's right. All right. Well, to stay on track with our cinematic theme that we had uh, this episode, I decided to mix a game with one of my all time favorite comedies Dude, Where's My Car? Ooh, all right. And it is something as simple as I, I pulled a John. John's a little bit better okay. still, but okay. 
Dude, where's my card? A nice. crossroad games. That's right. Dude, where's my card? And dead of winter. Oh. All right, guys. You can you imagine playing a game where you can be, uh, you know, Ashton Kutcher or those other people that that aren't famous Please anymore? Please no. And uh, you can go to the different locations uh, to try to investigate the events that happened the night before. Instead of going to the library, you can go to the dry cleaners. Instead of going to the uh, into the uh, um, you know school, you can go to the arcade. That's right, and you can even go to Zoltan. That's right. And as you're moving between the two the locations, your threats that are approaching you are the 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 uh, attractive space aliens, the 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 Norwegian space aliens, and of course Zoltan himself. So uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, and then you have the crossroad system. So you got the story. So if somebody you know. Like says, gotcha. dude, you go stop, and you read the event that happens. <laughs> and it just ultimately says, if someone at the table says, dude, you have to say, sweet, sweet, and then they have to say, dude, and then that goes on for like a good thirty minutes, and that's half the game. So, yeah. <laughs> so someone comes yeah. in and says, oh, you don't tell them, you were stupid. So yeah, so, so, dude, where's my card? Sweet, a crossroad games. Okay, I, I, or you could have a whole different name, like uh, dead of my car, or dude, where's my winter, or. Or it's yeah. winter, my car's dead. I mean, something like that. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I was trying to think about it. I was also thinking about like, dude, where's my automobiles? Or dude, where is my Kanban? Uh, That's but pretty good. I, I don't know. I went out the pretty I went good. the easy route with uh, all right. a crossroad game. <laughs> okay. That works. You know, that it, works. It's true. At first I was like, oh, I felt like you just kind of mailed it in, but then the more you talked about it, I was like, no, this is actually this works. Yep. Like you yep. actually put it together. Like, you know, yeah, like if you know. had gone with dude or my automobile, like that one just wouldn't have worked, but like it made more sense, right? It was more straight on. Yeah. But that, that was fantastic. I really like that. That was good. That actually not bad at all there, Daniel. That actually not sounds bad. really good. Like especially when you're like the aliens. I'm like, oh yeah, that that works. Yeah. I like they lot. had threats. They had dangers. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. That's what I'm saying. Like I was just like, yeah, this actually totally works. It makes sense completely. Yeah. That was great. We've come to the end of the segment and we'll see if Hansa won this one because he needs some <laughs> points, but uh, we're going to get points for first, second, and third place here on, on our tabletop team up. So Randy, who is the third place winner? Oh, oh uh, no. We have a consolation prize going to Hansa apparently. Oh, okay. Okay. So, oh, does that mean I get was. to, do I get something? Uh, apparently you get oh. nothing. It's an honorable mention because you're a oh. guest. Okay. That's fine. <laughs> That's fine. Everything's fine. It's it's a third place is actually Daniel. What? Uh, ah, somebody had I, to be I had third. A visual aid. Somebody had I to be third. My card. It's and it's tough. one of Randy's favorite games. You know. Ah, ah that's like, what it was. It looks like he dead was... of winter. There's even a zombie hand. See the zombie hand? He's pandering. He was pandering. That's what. <laughs> All right. What? Oh, wow. Second place is wow. Chris. Getting him up to eleven points. There we go. Wow. I finally get my due. You know, I I don't know. I I actually no offense, John. No offense, but I think Chris has had the best one. I thought Chris's was really good. I could totally get on board this, but it's your visual aid. We know it. <laughs> and oh, it's Chris also did uh, me. it's but, also uh, Chris is pandering to the judge earlier. <laughs> that's exactly what it was too. I think he felt that. I think he so felt by that. the oh man, I really want to talk about it because it's on point with the game, but I guess I have to wait for next time. Right. I'm adding a note. We're going to come back to this in the future. Next time I win, we are going to talk about this. I'm putting it in my phone right now. John, you talk about stuff that I don't care about. Okay. Uh, well, that means I win. I'll go ahead and announce it. I won. And it's been a while since I've won. Actually, I won in the last show we did, but I had to throw it to the host. So, or, you know, the guest. No, the last so. show we did, I won by a spectacular Oh, fashion. that's right. I blocked that one out of my mind. Because yeah. I was, okay. <laughs> And we talked about it earlier in the game, earlier in the show, and that's what I want to talk about. I'm making an appeal to the game designers everywhere that take the guts of this game, this beautiful game, The Godfather, Corleone's Empire. This thing went down to 10 bucks a couple years ago because they overproduced it or whatever, because guess what? Nobody knows about the movie The Godfather, so they weren't buying it. Unless you played it, you weren't buying it. And now it's back up to like a hundred bucks for this game. Have you seen that on eBay and everything? You, really? Yeah. These games are going for over a hundred dollars new. And so, They're yeah, good. I saw one actually at the uh, Gen Con garage sale and 
yeah, I was going to snag it up. Some dude already had it that was like 30 bucks. I'm like, what? Because yeah, you can't find them for that anymore. And I have a broken piece in here. So that's why I was looking for it. But somebody take the guts of this game. This is a beautiful game. Add a little bit more to it. You know what they do when they bring stuff out, Chris. They add some more to it so you can make it a Kickstarter and, you know, charge people 200 bucks for it. I don't care. I'll buy it. I'll buy a new version of this game with some upgraded components and I will enjoy it. You know, add, all it really needs is more missions. Do you guys agree? That's that's basically all you need is because the missions will get kind of the samey every game. You can have different it. maps. Everything too. Else, you know, if you played it 10, 15 times, the missions start getting a little samey. But what would be really cool is you play with, take a little page from uh, Pioneer Days. You guys have played Pioneer Days, right? where you start with different types of people and you start and those are the only ones in the game. The rest of them aren't, you would do that. It, use group a and B on the expand on the missions and put them in there. And that way you'd have different missions each time. And that, that would be one way to do it. A whole bunch of missions, but you use different groups of them and maybe they work well together. I don't know. Something like that. I'm not a game designer. You people out there that make games do this, man. This game is amazing. It needs to come back out. That's, that's my two minute spiel. I like it. It's fair. Thank you. Yeah, no, that game definitely deserves a lot more love. I'm glad. I mean, I'm not glad it's going for a hundred dollars, but like what that means for it does make me glad because people yeah. are realizing that there's a solid game there, and maybe um, somebody so. will wake up and yeah, remake it. That's right. We can hope. All right, guys. Well, let's end this show with uh, birthdays. I'll start yeah. with uh, wishing a happy birthday to Ark Nova 2021. It's three years old. Ark Nova is one of my favorite games. You get to build a zoo and you get to race around scoring tracks. But sorry, Hansa, not a lot of cubes in this one. <laughs> All right. I've got Foundations of Rome, which is two years old. So it's starting to get old. Uh, but Foundations of Rome, this game looks amazing. This is one of those games. It's like one of my Grail games just to play at least. I Do we even know anybody that owns Foundations of Rome? Have you guys seen it played? I have not. No, I, I, someone at PC bad. Gamers probably If you know it, me but... and you own this game, let's please bring it to a game night or something because I would love to play this game. This, this just looks amazing. It looks like it's, people call it overproduced. I think it just looks produced just enough. I don't think it's going to be... Uh, tedious to use all the different things i think it's just going to add to the enjoyment of the game it's a very light game from what i see on bgg too mm -hmm. uh like a, a rating of under two but our but foundations of rome two years old in april yeah it's definitely overproduced but you know what's exciting about it is that i believe it's going to be up for the spiel de jar this year in 2024 <laughs> yes probably uh, will uh that's a call back to a long-term joke in case you've never watched our show before. <laughs> but anyways though uh my mine is my, my number one my tribal chief of board gaming power grid uh I, I i i'm so okay so recently we did the board the board, march madness board games and you know what the fact that castles of burgundy won because of castle of burgundy the new edition the miniatures game i even half a mo had a half a moment i was like you know what that'd be great if they actually came out with a kickstarter power grid so all the stupid people could get excited about it because of all the junk that's added <laughs> to it but you know what I still don't think so because I love the fact that you can still get this game for like $35 today. Like, wow, it is still very cheap, even though it's it, it's a fantastic game because it's not overproduced. So, you know what? As much as I would love to have the chance of Power Grid going number one in our March Madness, uh uh, I love you, Power Grid. You're timeless. Happy 20th birthday. Let's go 200 more. You, <laughs> you know, Chris, Power Grid, I thought it had a chance of winning. It did really well in March it Madness. Did. Board that, gaming. It did. That's why I was like, Which you I, know, we talked about it. Like, if there was a miniatures version of it, people would probably put it number one, but I don't think it's worth it. Thanks to all of our wonderful viewers out there. Remember to tap those like and subscribe buttons. Also, be sure to join our Facebook group Around the Board. Like and subscribe on our YouTube channel and send us an email to mail at aroundtheboard.net or reach out to us on Twitter or TikTok. Until next time, we'll see you around, around the, board. the board. Man, Let's all protest how John should have got third in that. Yeah, I, did, I, I honestly was like, I, at first I, I was so glad we did the consolation prize for Hansa because I was like, if he got points from one of us, I was going to be like, what the crap? <laughs>